welcome to the Keel Hauled Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Logan, and we've got a lot of Sea of Thieves news to cover today, so tie yourselves to the mast and hold fast. Ahoy there, pirates. I hope you had yourselves a good week and a good weekend. I know I did. This week, I have none other than the gold hoarders from the Keel Hauled community diving in this week to the upper level, the, the top layer of season four, what we think of the shrines, the treasuries, the cosmetics, all that and more in this week's episode of Keel Hauled Podcast. But first, I want to make sure I thank the patrons who didn't make it to this episode, as well as the ones that did. So, thank you to Chateau Neuf, Cosmic Johnson, El Jefe Esteban, Gingerbeard, Trickster, Jabaro5, Kazia the Rogue, Lumpy SRQ, Dub Dub Goose, Evil Morpheus, Xbox Mike29, Munchie, Registella, Rust Bell Kid, Tian Professor, Vibralux, Big Bad Pad, Mina Fairy, Super Pack, Davram TV, Fergatron, Skinny Matt, Straw Hat, Pat Connor, Windsor Chris, and Zam Wow. Thank you all so much for your support every week, every month. It means the world to me that you do it. Again, for the captains, the gold hoarders, if you guys want to join in with the episodes, just let me know. I'm trying to adjust the times on Saturdays at the last weekend of the month to make sure that you guys have an opportunity to jump in if that's something that you want to do. Let me know. Other than that, Pirates, let's get into the community episode. Oh, real quick, uh, just as a little bit of a life note for those that are listening, I have been pretty ill the last week, and as such, it's kind of taken a lot out of me. I've been relaxing a lot. Uh, I went and got tested. Everything's fine. No coconut fever. But it's going to be a little bit lighter of as much edit work that I do with the podcast. I've been trying to take it easy and just kind of chill out. So I'll hopefully be back to normal next week uh, and things will be kind of on par with what you normally expect for this episode uh, for the podcast. So, but I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a heads up that it's not quite as tight as I usually get it because uh, I went and ended up taking a pretty long nap most of the weekend so uh, I hope you guys still enjoy this uh, I was really happy to get to sit down and chat with the uh, the patrons this week welcome to the keel hauled gold hoarder episode this episode is about the gold hoarders are jumping in to discuss the latest update that we just got uh, we're going to be diving into things we're going to try and keep it as spoiler free as possible I know a lot of pirates are interested in jumping into the sunken kingdom they did uh, emphasize a lot of the lore and uh, they wanted to make sure that they that they gave you something to kind of explain some of the stuff that we got with a pirate's life we're going to try and avoid uh, sailors or, or any kind of uh, spoilers not sailors for that so that people don't have to worry about missing out or having to skip this episode so we're going to try and just cover some of the the broad strokes of the actual patch as well as the uh, season content and uh, the Emporium content. So with that, uh, I today I've got El Jefe Esteban, me and a fairy, Registel and Big Bad Pad. Uh, we were trying to make sure that Big Bad Pad had uh, all of the, the microphone issues sorted. So it looks like he's got that sorted, um, but we may have to see if, if that works out. If it doesn't, uh, I want to try and get his thoughts in on this somehow in the future. So uh, Hefe, how are you doing today? I am doing all right. Doing all right. Awesome. Mina, welcome. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Great. You sound uh, really nice with this beautiful microphone that you got. Thank you. Regis, how are you doing? Doing good. I got uh, Twitch drops in the background, so I don't have to miss out on them. Nice. Yeah, hopefully folks are, are uh, paying attention to the social medias. Again, I didn't. I wish I'd known about this. I would have talked about it last week. Or maybe we did talk about it last week. I can't remember. It's been a week. And then we've got, of course, Big Bad Pad. How are you doing, Pad? I am slowly de-stressing about headsets and PCs. <laughs> well, you sound beautiful. So I'm glad you're here and I'm glad you could join us for this episode. Um, for those that are, are in the chat, they already know, but I've got a screen open. We're going to be diving into some of these. Uh, I did want to kind of kick it off with season four. We're in a new season and we got a whole bunch of new content coming with it. Um, this brings in a bunch of new uh, seasonal rewards. We're going to be entering into the Sunken Kingdom. We've got a whole new set of uh, different types of loot as well as uh, vaults and uh, uh, what I think is kind of a mini fort. Uh, but I wanted to ask you guys to see uh, what did you guys want to jump into? Hefe, did you have an idea of what you wanted to jump into? Uh, just start off this with the Sunken Kingdom. That's, that's kind of the big stuff. 
Uh, how about you, Mina? What did you want to jump into? Um, I am really not thus. Regis, what did you want to kind of dive into today? Uh, Sunken Kingdom first, please. Okay. And then Pat, are you, are you good with Sunken Kingdom or did you have uh, something else? Oh, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take the lead from everybody else. All right. So Sunken Kingdom. This is kind of crazy for me. I don't know about you guys, but I wasn't in expecting to get more depth in the pirate's life content we we got pirate's life it was great to to kind of see the sunken kingdom uh with the sirens it was a brand new thing to us and it felt very sea of thieves uh now with season four we have a brand new set of uh content drops that are coming in in the form of mini vaults and mini forts but they're all underwater uh in the the sunken kingdom um the website actually speaks to this and says the siren attacks on unweary pirates continue more of their underwater realm has been revealed there are six known siren shrines each with their own unique challenges and threats housing not only plunder but records or records of siren history and lore from crews who can breach their walls and solve the mysteries within valuable relics lie at the heart of each shrine but beware the sirens are sure to make their presence known to any pirate who dares trespass in their sunken kingdom. I'm really excited about this. I've been having a lot of fun with the with the different shrines and the treasuries. And it's nice to see that with uh, an update as big as Pirate's Life that just came in, that they are prepared to add additional content and actually expand Sea of Thieves even more uh, with this season that follows right after such a big update. Um, let's start with uh, Hefe. Were you surprised that we were getting this kind of an update drop uh, right after Pirate's Life? Did you expect that we were going to have uh, this much content coming right after a big drop? Right after, no. I figured at some point we would have, this would be our next quote map expansion would be going, you know, now that we have can go down uh, but i was not expecting it to be to be this soon so it was a pleasant surprise yeah it really was i was i was really taken aback by just how much was coming into this mina have you had a chance to jump into these um yes i have yeah are you liking them are you pretty happy with uh how much we're getting as far as like stuff to do in season four i am yeah i love the fact that they're all very different um different mechanics in each one and different things to look at um I think they're really good. Yeah, I've been enjoying them. Regis, how are you feeling about the uh, the update drop? Is it big enough? Is it too small? Uh, or is it just right? Where, where are you falling with the, the Sunken Kingdom update? Yeah, it's uh, re really good. Like, uh, we might chime in again with the teasing like months and months ago saying, we got to expand downwards, not outwards. And yeah, I was, I was expecting like something after Pirate's Life, but not like, you know, new locations, like, you know, <laughs> Uh, Zelda like dungeons and uh, yeah, I did say Zelda like dungeons and you know mini forts with the with the shrines and treasuries like you know really nice surprise and I think after you know we went back we went to the Sucker Kingdom for the first time in the Pirates Life maybe you know it was kind of inevitable that we have to come back but I wasn't expecting like this bloody soon yeah me either uh, Pat have you gotten to play around with any of these yet uh, yeah I got to uh, say with me in a couple of nights um it's after listening well actually i haven't finished listening to the uh the sea of thieves podcast um obviously when they were notifying you obviously of how many people they've now got working on different teams it's like well i was expecting something big but like you say not season four i was expecting that to be in season five and six obviously then once they've had time to actually do work on it so i'm actually now looking forward to f season five and six i know they're obviously months in advance but um knowing that they've got a lot of people working on them um i think we're going to get quite a lot of more content coming in yeah yeah me too i i i'm very curious to see just how how much uh season five will be will differ from season four because i it feels like this was uh something and i think i was talking to thor von blitz uh yesterday we were talking in uh the mike chapman uh chat that was going around for i think it was i can't remember what the the basis of but uh, mike chapman was doing interviews with community members uh just to kind of talk and answer any questions and stuff and i think that they talked about how uh, this content was built uh, kind of in parallel with A Pirate's Life. So it sounds like that this stuff is stuff that has been ready to go for a bit and that they may have had time to, to actually work on a fair amount of content that's actually going to be coming for season five and season six, uh, which is exciting because it, it's it's surprising to think that they're working so much so far out and that 
they may actually maintain a seasonal cadence. This is something that Mike had, uh, excuse me, Joe Neat had talked about where in one of the last uh, videos or podcasts, I can't remember which, I think it was a, a podcast where they talked about how they had taken in the feedback from season one and that it wouldn't probably be until season uh, three or four that they started to implement some of those changes. The recent podcast talked about how they were going to uh, make sure that they were planning for content like uh, better updates for events and stuff like that. So I'm pretty happy with the Sunken Kingdom. I've gotten a chance to go to all of the different shrines. I've gotten a chance to do all of the treasuries. Uh, I'm shy three books from being able to finish up all of those. And I'm about halfway done with most of the uh, killing sirens and killing ocean crawlers for those. I think the thing that is the biggest issue right now for me is finding these uh, messages in a bottle. Um, so have you guys had a chance to find the messages in a bottle? Uh, yeah, we um, our first night on there, we had we found two right off the bat, and um, kind of planned our sail in accordance with, the, with with those two particular missions. Just so that was two of the mission uh, of the shrines that we uh, that we went to. Yeah. I, I had found one and it was a, a, a ruby one. Um, it seems like they're a little bit harder to find. Uh, has anyone else had a chance to find one of these? And and if so, uh, where was it? Was it pretty far from where you found it to to send you to a place to actually find the uh, the breadth of the sea? I think we found two on each of the separate evenings we've sailed, um, and both of the, well, I think most of them have actually come from barrels. Um, barrels are plenty. Um, can't remember how far we had to sail to go to get to them, but we were on a, a kind of sort of clockwise rotation going through all the shrines anyway. So I think we just did it as we got to it. Ah, uh, that makes sense. I think we found one of ours on the beach, and I don't remember where the second one was. It may have been on the beach, but I'm not sure. But they were both in the same sea that we were in, so they were they were pretty close. You didn't have to go all across creation to get to it. Yeah. So with some of the shrines, um, like we had mentioned a little bit before, Regis, you had talked about how uh, the shrines were, were different. Uh, there are six shrines spread out across the seas, uh, none in the Devil's Roar. It feels like the Devil's Roar is still kind of relegated to that hard mode, and they are trying to keep that just for some of the uh, things that you're, you're standard kind of missions wouldn't want to to take you to it seems like with the uh sirens and volcanoes doesn't seem like hot water would really mix really well for them seems like that's something yeah i was that... gonna i was gonna say like i was gonna say like you know i think the sirens would like to like you know keep a keep away from the volcanic region that is devil's war because you know they could be blown alive if any, if everyone was like i don't know boiled like boiled fish or in this case, boiled siren. Yeah, yeah. So it seems it seems like that that makes sense at least lore wise. Um, I am I'm really curious to jump in. Uh, one of these days, I want to dive into some of the Morrow uh, journals that talked about siren princes and such, or Merfolk princes and whatnot and whatnot. But maybe for another day. Um, but with the different shrines, each one is kind of like its own little uh, escape room. You kind of have to work out using some of the different mechanics that we that we picked up from the latest patch uh, or latest uh, update with uh, Pirate's Life. And it's kind of cool to see some of the things. It's one of the things that we had with uh, the first Tall Tales. The first Tall Tales were really awesome. And we had asked, you know, some of those mechanics if we were going to get those in day-to-day -day life with Sea of Thieves. You know, if we'd start seeing traps and stuff implemented through voyages in regular Gold Hoarder missions, uh, Order of Souls, things like that. This is kind of taking... Uh, that to to its fullest we're seeing mechanics that are coming in from a pirate's life being implemented into new vaults that is actually coming into with the actual shrines so jumping into shrines uh hefe let's start off with you guys have you guys uh enjoyed the shrines with the different takes that they've that they've had for each one have you done it done much to really kind of uh figure out which ones are the easiest ones have you played around with recycling them at all we have not recycled them as of yet but we have gone to all of them and we're ready to do the final the mission you get from lorena um so we've been to all of them and i really like the fact that they're all different um like when you think of a like a regular you know skeleton fort, yeah, your environment's a little different, but it's just a wash, rinse, and repeat of what you do. Whereas with these things, every single one of them's different. They they have they have different you know, 
trap ideas or puzzle ideas or enemy types or you know different things and so that's really really refreshing when let's be honest there's a whole bunch of this game that's just a reskinned repeat of something we've already done um so i was really excited really excited to see that mina how are you feeling about the different shrines um i really like them i love the fact that there are different mechanics for each one um different ways to do them the loot's pretty good yeah yeah definitely regis you you'd brought this up uh did you have any further thoughts on the, the different shrines or any of the the mechanics that you liked coming from the tall tales and brought into these shrines uh so far and unfortunately i've only been to the one shrine which i think is the shrine of flooded embrace oh. but it's really it's really nice but it's really nice. I mean, it's like a, it's like a ship. It's like a shipwreck. Yeah. It reinforced stronghold for the for the sirens. So yeah. it's really nice. Can can we uh, uh pad? A, I, I want to jump into your thoughts real quick, but I have a I have a side note that I want to jump onto about Regis's one because that's that one shrine is one that I want to dive into a little bit. But pad. Uh, of the shrines that you had to do, were were you pretty happy with the mechanics that you saw there? Were they uh, too hard, too easy? What did you think about them? I definitely liked the variety. Um, I think the one that uh, Regis was on about, uh, I, uh, we had, I had a problem with last night in the fact that because we were as a galleon, I was the only one down there and the enemies kept spawning at galleon rate and so i couldn't actually get anything to, anything done while i was down there it was literally die because there is no food available there's only really one safe port safe point um in the whole thing um so hope, hopefully that scales to the ship size you are on yeah um, but yeah no overall brilliant um, the variety involved in all of them. Yeah, I, I think it does. And I, and I want to pick this one out because I think this is the one that I think most people have run into and are genuinely disappointed with. Uh, the, the Shrine of Flooded Embrace, if I'm correct, and I could be wrong because I haven't memorized them all or haven't, I've only done them all once, is the one over by Shrik Shipwreck Bay. And it has the journals from Duke the Dark Lord. And it is essentially just a basic hole in the world like it is just a giant cavernous region there's no there's no statue of eric there's no little mermaid i'm very disappointed about this and when i got in i was really kind of surprised because uh as i was sailing around or as i was swimming around i would constantly get attacked by merfolk and i'm like okay i get it it's the flooded embrace merfolk are there it totally makes sense but man to to have to try and swim around looking for a mechanic that isn't there or at least something that i haven't figured out was really kind of disappointing for me and the treasure wasn't that great in that one uh you're right there is only one really good safe place to actually go in the middle of the actual uh area and the the loot for that one really isn't as good either um with the ones that you guys did did anyone work through the ones that were in the ancients uh in the ancient isles because i don't know about you i don't know if this was something that was just a, a weird spawn thing but the ones that i did with the ancient isles both had tributes chests Am I crazy on that, or is that is that something that you guys found at other ones, or is it just those two? I think they're. I may be wrong with this, but I think they're at all of them. You just have to look for them. Um, they. I've seen them at at, at quite a few of them. There was one that we didn't didn't uh, find one at, but I'm thinking if I had gone up a little bit further, kind of off in a corner, kind of thing, it may have been there because we were. I was looking at something at a video somebody was doing and i think it was that same shrine and, and, and there was one in that video okay. um so I, I i think i may be wrong but i think they're there because I, I think it's kind of like your 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 big treasure item for uh for each of these okay that's what i was wondering because i hadn't found one in the in in any of the other ones it was only those two and i was thinking like it makes sense but it just seems off that that would be the the case <laughs> How did you guys feel when you first kind of jumped into the water and you were swimming down? Because I, I was pretty awestruck when I was swimming down with most of the shrines and actually just kind of seeing the layout of them. I was really, really happy with what it was like swimming down in there. Uh, they've made it a lot easier for you to breathe and stuff. But was anyone just kind of taken back by how cool it was to be swimming down in these? I'm very pleased with just the aesthetics of everything and the uh, on top of the visuals, all of the audio that they've added into this update is tremendous. And I, 
I don't know. I, I like I like music and sounds and stuff, and so in that aspect, this the, the whole update across the board has been really really cool for me. Yeah, definitely. Regis, you had something. I was just gonna say like, uh, well, it was like kind of like you know going to the Sun Kingdom for the first time during a pirate's life, you know, a new area, a new like kind of a whole new world, if you will, if you want to quote Disney while you're at it. Just you know, it kind of like reignites that you know like feeling of like. You discover something that was like long forgotten, but recently discovered yeah, OG or stuff like that. Definitely. Uh, how are you guys feeling overall about having Sunken Kingdom pull you away from world events? This is the first update we've had in a while that wasn't a tall tale that I can think of. And correct me if I'm wrong, that wasn't a cloud in the sky. And I'm curious if you guys are, are more more about having enriching the world with permanent things like this as opposed to having uh world events had do you have any thoughts on that what i was going to say was that we've definitely noticed a distinct lack of emissary ships on the servers because people are doing underwater stuff and not putting anything on live boats not raising flags they're not collecting loot as such um from islands etc they're just doing new stuff for season four um and so for for the reapers out there it's it's a little bit thin on the ground for pickings um but in terms of lent longevity um i think any additional area um is a bonus to the game whether it gets used a lot after the initial run through for people a bit like the raw that yes when it first came out everybody was over there and now it's a case of uh, only the hardcore people go over there to do their athena missions and etc um but in general any any additional um, area to go and explore um in the sea of thieves is a bonus for me yeah i've definitely noticed that uh that there's been a bunch of reapers out on the seas but it seems like the reapers are more interested in doing the shrines for the bonus in gold as opposed to going out and actually hunting people well my case for for because i'm the only one probably you're probably the only gold holder on the to play alliance servers like when it, when we have a six ship alliance server yes that's a thing uh usually half of those ships are dedicated to shrines and treasuries like you got like two sh two ships dedicated to shrines, while the third one is dedicated to like the treasuries. And the, yeah, it's really crazy, like how you know dedicated the things the things are right now. Just for my for that in for a little. Yeah, I've definitely noticed that a lot of people are like. There's been times where I've been at a shrine probably far too long and just hunting down journals and when i get back up i fully anticipate and that's this is a good question for you guys what is your what is your kind of level of anxiety when you're down in these shrines like are you guys kind of worried about what's going on have has anyone left anyone up at the top to to watch those we would pop back and forth you know once or twice um we but our general idea is when we're going to these things we're going with an empty ship we don't have any kind of mass amount of supplies you know no mass amount of treasure and then we go and turn in immediately after we we have cleared one uh just because we have every every expectation that we're gonna have no ship coming back so we when we go down we we, we start off with the idea of okay we're not gonna have a ship when we come back so it, we go into it from that that mindset when you come back and your ship is there then it's a happy surprise yeah yeah i'm i'm kind of in the same mindset i i think as soon as we actually get to the end of a shrine or the end of a treasury which the treasuries we haven't really discussed a whole lot i will in a sec but every time i come back up i fully anticipate being on a fresh island with a, a ship instead of actually getting back onto my ship and and surprisingly i think thanks to the the newness of the uh, the event a lot of people are more curious about actually doing these as opposed to going out and hunting other ships so thankfully most of the time i've come back to my actual ship i think the one time that i didn't uh we worked out that it was actually because of a storm that had passed over and we had been down in a treasury so long working on that that by the time we got back up our ship had been sunk by the storm alongside a skeleton ship because when we got back up to the top uh i i took the mermaid back ended up on an island grabbed our ship thor who was with me at the time uh swam back up and found a whole bunch of loot just sitting on the top of the surface and we were like well that's not ours but who would have sunk themselves as well was it someone that like had a bunch of treasure and kegged themselves and kegged us as well and 
they both sank and now they're going to come back and it wasn't that but uh that's definitely the story we're probably going to be telling in taverns but i've i've had a lot of anxiety for the most part going into knowing that at some point when i come back up from the surface i'm going to run into not having a ship there and i think that that may not be the case for the first couple of weeks, but I feel like, like Patty, you were talking about how Reapers have been kind of, uh, kind of light on, on stuff to feed on. I think that's going to change after the first couple of weeks. I think people are going to get back into their normal rhythm of doing content once they get all these commendations knocked out. That you're going to start running into the people who are trickling in to the content, trying to do them, and getting sunk by Reapers or other ships who recognize that whatever's whatever they're doing is probably going to garner a bunch of treasure. Ahoy there, pirates. This is the ad for this episode, and I did want to let you know if you wanted to avoid these and just get a regular filler, you can head over to the Patreon. There's a special feed just for patrons that get the ad-free version. If you want to keep listening, though, I can't say I blame you because this week I want to let you know about Loot Crate and getting 15% off of most crates and crate subscriptions when you use the link and code Robots Radio in the show notes. Also, you can head over to audiobooks.com, get your first three audiobooks for free, and that can include any two vip books or use the affiliate link for green man gaming if you're a pc gamer or you'd like to save money on games it's one of the benefit of being a pc gamer head over to green man gaming you can get codes for steam epic any of the different stores that they have deals going on they have deals going on all the time and if you plan on buying there please consider using our affiliate link all of that goes straight to me through the network thank you all so much for everything that you do to support this podcast it means the world to me and i continue to try and improve the quality and the content for you with that pirates let's get back to the show did anyone have any feelings on the mermaid statue itself we have a brand new mechanic in the game where you can store loot in these mermaid statues. And then when you get back up to the surface, a merfolk will greet you with your treasure and you can only claim the treasure. No one else can talk to the merfolk to actually get your treasure from it. So uh, Mina, you've been been silent for a while. How are you feeling about that mechanic? And Pad, let's jump into you afterwards. I quite like it. I think it's quite cool. They pop up with their little clam backpack which has to be a TARDIS or something because <laughs> the size of that clam and the amount of stuff that you can put in it doesn't really fit. No, doesn't make <laughs> but sense. But I, I do like it. Um, it's also quite funny when people that are down below push the wrong button and empty everything out at their feet. <laughs> I haven't run into that. That's funny, though. There's been plenty of times where I've almost done it and and I actually have to turn away from it uh, to, to be able to do that. But yeah, the the magic in, in Pad, do you think it's weird that the that the merfolk are helping us with the siren treasure from the siren shrines? No, um, <laughs> I, I, no. But the fact that they, they've been helping um, sailors who fall overboard get back to their ships. Mm -hmm. um, all they're doing is they're helping us pick up our treasure. Um, they're not that fussed of where it's coming from. Um, yeah, that's a solid point for me, if I'm being honest. Um, so I've been really enjoying that mechanic. I think that mechanic is something that I would love to see brought to uh, other other Tall Tales in the future. Like if we're going to be collecting treasure from Tall Tales, I would love to be able to store them in statues and then be able to pick them up later on and have access to that only. Because for me, at least, when I got done with the treasury with Thor, um we had all, all of our treasure in the merfolk and when i was sailing back after our ship had gotten sunk by the storm uh, a brig crew uh full of reaper pajama boys who were probably really well versed in tdm uh tried to attack us but didn't manage their sails uh always tried to board us and just could not take a naval battle and they were circling around us for quite a while. And I think the intent was is that they knew that we were at a treasury and that they knew that they we, that we probably had loot. But because we hadn't talked to the the merfolk who had all of our treasury uh, loot, there there was nothing on the surface for them to, to pick up. And I was I was really, really happy that that was one of those things like we had a 15 minute battle. And after we had sunk the the brig, uh, we went back to the merfolk and the merfolk was still there still had all of our treasure too and i was really really happy about that um one thing that uh pad you brought up you want to dive into that little tip for folks yeah um the the collector's chest that you pick up um, while you're down in the vaults and treasuries 
you can actually load up with three loot items and put it in a statue and it only counts as one item so you're actually sending four items back up for the cost of one and it's brilliant because you get quite a lot of collector's chests down there yeah and as far as i can tell you can bring collector's chests with you as well too so if you if you get into one of these treasury vaults and maybe you guys can help me test this uh but once you get to a treasury vault you go into a little kind of corridor it's almost like an airlock uh where there's one door that gets you into the entry point and then there's another entry point beyond that tunnel to get you into the actual arena and i think the intent there is you want everyone ready to go before you jump into that little treasury arena uh in these mini vaults these treasuries are are absolutely awesome i i've had so much fun uh fighting in them going between skeletons with kegs or ocean crawlers to merfolk the entire arena fills up with water and drains i don't know where the water goes but it sounds like a toilet which is hilarious um but i love that you can grab a bunch of the bubble wands that are strewn about in that little air corridor there that little pocket and drag them over to the door hit the door so that it opens and then grab all of the disney sticks and bring them inside the actual vault so then you have like four additional sticks if people uh aren't there to actually pick them up so if you're a solo crew or a duo crew or a brig you can at least use all four of the sticks if you grab them and drag them in so uh let's talk about treasuries a little bit um before we jump into the cosmetics because i know hefe you had some had some thoughts on the cosmetics and i want to make sure we address that to get everyone's feelings on those but have you guys played around with the treasuries uh hefe have you played um play or done done all of those and and you're ready for uh lorena's quest right uh we've done one of the treasuries uh we've got to think two more to do oh, okay. um so for the lorena thing it's all tied around the shrines so gotcha. once you do all the stuff in the shrines that unlocks the, the lorena voyage uh but yeah we've done the uh the treasuries and um we also found is that typically there's going to be more loot than one of the mermaids can hold. So whenever we get done, we'll send a couple of folks back to the ship and leave one person in the shrine with all the extra stuff you know piled up in front of the uh, statue, and then they'll release it up top, and then the person left down there will fill it up again. Um, so we it's been pretty pretty lucrative for the most part. Um, I think over the course of doing a, sh I think a shrine and a treasury, we ended up with around 250k of, and that was nothing um, multiplied because we're not running any kind of emissaries right now, just to keep keep the nosy nellies away. Yeah, uh, Mina, Pad, you guys said you'd sail together, correct? That's yes. Correct. Okay. Did you guys get a chance to do a treasury yet? I have. Paddy didn't. Ooh. What are your feelings on the treasury? Um, I quite enjoyed it. I was with Crow on a sloop and um, we did one just while well, the other ship we were with did something else. Um, and it was quite enjoyable, actually. We quite enjoyed doing it. And the loot in the vault was, was kind of nice, too. Yeah, definitely. Regis, have you gotten a chance to jump into one of these treasuries yet? No, I haven't. But I uh, really, like, really like it because... It, you're fighting more than just obviously skeletons like you have with the previous force and stuff. You're fighting against the new enemies like the sirens and the ocean crawlers. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's really, yeah, it's, uh, it's the, it, like you said, it's like forts, just, you know, under the water and more than just coral skeletons as you highlighted in the patch notes right here. Yeah. So we've got three treasuries. There's one per sea of the original three seas. Uh, each of them, I would say, takes about probably 15 minutes. Uh, from what I can tell, I think there's 10 waves, like a standard fort, but the fa the waves feel like they are shorter, uh, but sometimes it, it depends uh, whether or not the actual treasury has to fill up with water or uh, drain the water. Every time the, the vaults actually drain the water, you'll be fighting either coral skeletons or ocean crawlers. And then after a certain amount of waves, you will get the treasury uh, vault uh, protector, I think is what they're called. And they're kind of like, once you kill them, there's no key. It just opens up the door that holds all the treasure. And the treasure in there has been pretty good. Um, I've seen some some weird things, like there's always just one weird gold pile. I don't know if that was intentional for them just to have one gold pile, uh, but that seems pretty consistent. And uh, overall, I, I, I love this. I love that it's a mini version of a fort. It's something that if you have a half hour to sail, you could easily sail over to a shrine or sail over to a treasury. And if you're not running into people who are going to sink you, 
that you could easily do one of these, get a fair amount of treasure, load up and head back to an outpost nearby to turn in without having to really commit to a whole lot. I think the thing that I like about these the most is that the shrines and the treasuries don't require a voyage or any prerequisite to actually go do. You can literally jump in, go do one, and jump out during a lunch break and get a decent amount of treasure. One thing that I've noticed, um, the ocean crawlers in the shrines and the treasuries do not seem to drop siren gems. Um, just an interesting thing that I've noticed so far. I don't know if that was by design or if that's going to change at some point, but um, just I think there's a, lo a lost opportunity for that much more treasure that potentially could be there kind of on a you know, spawn rate basis. Yeah, that's true. I hadn't thought about that, but uh, they they don't do that. I've I have noticed the one the one thing about the treasuries that I hope that rare goes and adjusts is uh, in each of the treasuries we see a bunch of the giant red mermaid statues, uh, the ones that are are kind of smaller versions of the big ones that you do at the end of Tall Tale Five for a Pirate's Life. And in a Pirate's Life Tall Tale Four, when you're on the uh, when you're on Davy Jones's ship, you're doing a wave based fight. Uh, but you're based on the Flying Dutchman. And each time you do one of those waves uh, after a certain amount of time, one of those statues actually kind of uh, sings a song or or has like a, a, a tone that indicates that there's another wave that's going to be starting. And with these little treasury vaults, I don't know if it was a time constraint, but it feels like each wave should have been indicated based on a different one of those mermaid statues going off. Did anyone else get that or am I am I expecting there, there to be a mechanic where there isn't? Um, I sorry i was wondering about those statues as well they just were were there and i half expected them to do something i don't know what but something and they didn't yeah yeah it seems like something that would have been a good way to let you know how far along in the in the actual fight you're at before you get to the final treasure vault holder uh which may actually help kind of assuage some of the the anxiety that came when i was fighting in them and i didn't know how long we'd been down there it felt like forever because i just wanted to get back up to my ship to make sure it was still there or to check the horizon and once you're in there you can't leave as far as i can tell uh, or at least I haven't tried to leave um, once one started because it generally kicks up the next wave pretty quickly. Uh, but I, I would love to to get a better idea if you can actually leave and go up and check or if you can come back down, just how that all works. Um, I do know that once one is started, if you spawn onto a ship and you swim down you can still enter into that vault uh but once someone is in that little air corridor uh between the outside sea and the inside of the actual treasury um no one can enter from the outside so say someone swims down and someone is inside that little that little air chamber uh they can't get in until whoever's in the air chamber proceeds into the actual vault which is kind of a weird airlock thing. Well, if there's nothing else on that, uh, let's jump into the season four cosmetics because Hefe, you had some feelings on this and I'm actually kind of surprised by that because I, I'm kind of of the up opposite mindset. <laughs> Um, so jumping into the plunder pass, uh, the plunder pass is live. It's $10 to, to pick up and we have a new set of, uh, cosmetics that are coming with it. I'm trying to look for the name for these guys, Jacko looter, which is a, a really weird play on Jack-o-lantern. Um, but starting off, Hefe, you, you, you don't like these? Is that right? I like the level 100 costume because the head spins and all that, but the rest of it, it I just, uh, now mind you paid my ten dollars i gave rare their money because i am 100 percent in support of studio i want them to continue putting out content but i don't the sword's okay it's that's a good piece i like that I mean, there's parts and pieces but i don't know like the ship i don't love the ship it just I, I i don't know i don't know okay um so mina let's let's let me get your feelings on these cosmetics
cosmetics. These kind of look like a little bit of a, a take on the uh, elemental set that we got that is based off of uh, Kameo uh, or the Ori set. Um, do, you, do you like these? Is this a, a harvesty look for you or a, a good enough Halloween set? I have to say I do like these. I've not liked the extra stuff in the last two seasons, but I, I like these. And after I get paid, I will be getting this tight this underpass awesome regis have have you gotten a chance to get a good opinion on these how are you feeling about them no it looks good i mean they're either they were inspired by obviously the headless horseman from sleepy hollow or the whole scarecrow thing back in the day or just halloween in general either way it looks really cool though i don't though it's a bug though it boggles me to, to wonder why or if he doesn't like the whole yeah it's, it's his opinion after all well, just, that's not it's, questioning I, your it's 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 I don't know. It's like like the wheel is cool. It's kind of got the whole little like scarecrowish feel to it. The costume is cool, but then like you go to like say like the flag and the sails and the figurehead, and it looks like something that just something you would see like if they did like a Thanksgiving set or something. You know? Yeah. I, I just I don't know. I don't know. I I'm, I'm probably way way overthinking it. <laughs> I I yeah, I validate your. I validate your opinion. Uh, Pad, how, how are you feeling about the Jacko Looter set so far? I haven't even seen it. <laughs> well, I've got the stream going on Discord if you want to jump in. Um, I'll kind of talk to... Oh, I want to speak to Hefe's uh, feeling here because um, we have the Jacko Looter. Uh, the sword looks like a, a, a bit of a scythe style or a scimitar. Um, I, I like the, the, the kind of uh, scarecrow helm i think that's really adorable the rest of it like uh mina actually talks about in the the chat here says that it's awesome autumn stuff uh it really is very much an autumn set um it, it's it's hard to have that juxtaposition between a jacko looter who looks like a take on what regis talked about which is like the headless horseman or you know some some kind of halloween style scary creature that is using a jack-o-lantern with a carved face is kind of like the scary aesthetic and then you look at the rest of the cosmetics and it feels more of a theme for a, a season as opposed to uh, something very directly tied to the the kind of jacko looter uh aesthetic you know all the the pumpkins and the sails are very neutral as far as like being scary or not it doesn't seem like they're really trying to emphasize uh something that is is intimidating about this cosmetic um but it, it's it's intended as just a a fall season as opposed to a halloween set and uh hefe can you kind of touch more on that or or is that kind of hitting what you think it might be yeah i think this is what it is i think it's just there's parts of it that 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 come across as maybe that autumn set just fine but then there's parts of it that comes across more of kind of like the halloween set and maybe i'm just not seeing the the flow together like there's parts and pieces of all of it that i like but as a whole package i don't know i just I don't know i don't know it's kind of like i think it's the figurehead i think it's the figurehead is, is the main thing that's like it just looks just, it's just a pumpkin it's just it's nothing it's nothing fancy it's just a pumpkin but yet you've got you know the headless horseman uh, you know, thing that you're going to get at the end that looks that looks cool. That that's that's awesome looking. And, yeah. You know, I I think I think maybe it's just the mix of the two, which is cool. It's fine. We really haven't had an autumn you know themed style set, so it's there's been a you know there's been a place for that. Um, I just don't know how much of this I will use on a regular basis. That's fair. So I, I wanted I wanted to uh, pad. Were you able to get a chance to take a look at it? Yeah. Hey, uh, um. I'm colorblind with greens and browns and reds, but yeah, it's fine. Um, oh, I no. do like the sword. I do like the sword. <laughs> I think a lot of folks are enjoying that kind of extended uh, scythe. Uh, it's not quite as curved as like a typical scythe you would use for uh, reaping, but it is it is close enough uh, to justify for a sword. Um, it's close enough to a scimitar. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I like the sword. The sword's cool looking. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think my favorite bits out of it so far are definitely the Jacko Looter costume, uh, the the scimitar sword, and the uh, scarecrow figure uh, uh, wheel. Wow, I couldn't get that out. Um, I like the coloring on the hull, uh, Patty. I wish I could I could describe it well enough to to give it justice. Um, but it is a, a different different hues of uh, green and brown, just beautifully done. Uh, 
I did want to talk a little bit about the Golden Nile ship collection, uh, which hopefully if you're watching the stream, you'll get a chance to kind of dig into this and see. Uh, it, it is very much a a kind of Egyptian style, but a, a different take on the Egyptian style. The thing that I have a problem with this is there is a, a collector's figurehead which is part of a bundle that you can pick up on the Microsoft store if you're looking to get the collector's figurehead on the cheap that has an alligator's uh, mouth wide open and they don't have a clock in there. And I'm just a little disappointed in Rare to not take advantage of the opportunity to capitalize on Hook for one and TT from uh, Diddy Kong Racing to really play into the idea. Like of all the times that I thought that we were going to get an alligator figurehead, the fact that it is one, not KK rule from Donkey Kong and two, not having a clock in his mouth that is TT from Diddy Kong Racing. And it's just a Golden Nile set. I appreciate that they're keeping it close to the rest of the cosmetics that they've brought in, uh, you know, with some of the different uh, Chinese themes as well as uh, the the Tinkerer set and stuff like that. But it felt like a missed opportunity. Um, was any were any of you enthralled by the Golden Nile ship collection to the point where you wanted to get the the costume and the weapons and the lantern and the ship cosmetics? I kind of had the same feelings you did. Like I, I, when I when I first saw it, I was like, oh, this is going to be a nod to Captain Hook. And then I got to really look at it. I'm like, oh, it is not a nod to Captain Hook. I'm disappointed. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Mina, were you, were you impressed by this at all? Um, I think some of it's quite cool. I I like the cap stand with all the little itty bitty crocodiles on it. <laughs> um, I don't I don't understand what's with all the blindfolds on all the crocodiles. The costume you're blindfolded and the cannons and the figurehead are also blindfolded what's with that that's really interesting i hadn't taken that into account but you're right they are that's really bizarre but i also think there should be a clock that ticks <laughs> i said alligator before but uh reading now it is definitely a crocodile yeah w did anyone have any uh other ideas as far as the the cosmetics that we got in the seasonal rewards this season um are the the wicked web set which is is kind of i don't know about you guys how are you feeling i'm trying to find images of it um and i'm not having luck with it on the the website here but uh what did you guys think of the wicked web stuff that's in the actual plunder pass again i can't speak to it because i haven't actually looked i only actually picked up the plunder pass yesterday i haven't even bothered looking at what the rewards are gotcha fa have it there's parts and pieces of it that are that are good uh the i think the first piece you get is a shirt and i was not impressed with it at all um <laughs> But I, I, I hate it. I, I am, I am, hard, I am hard on the cosmetics this season. I, I, I apologize, rare. Um, but there's definitely parts and pieces. It's something that they have done compared to like the first season, maybe in the second season, is they have got some. They've got continuity throughout the um, cosmetics, and I appreciate that because just the random bits and pieces here and there. Me and my OCD self had real issue with that, so I appreciate that they have kind of coalesced around like one theme and they're sticking to that one theme throughout throughout the seasonal rewards so I, I do appreciate that but there's definitely there's parts and pieces to it that 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 are that are that are good um i'm excited about the uh twos and the scars and all that kind of stuff i, I love those kind of things so i'm excited to get to those and see what those actually look like on my pirate yeah, there's there's a few tattoos and scars this season that I really like. Uh, there's a curse that's involved with the siren uh, content as well that you get for completing everything. Uh, I won't dive into too much of that because I don't want to spoil it for folks that haven't gotten a chance to see it yet. Um, but with the Wicked Web content, uh, did anyone else have any feelings on this uh, that you've been able to see? I know a lot of people were surprised to find a, um, uh, I can't remember what the word of it is, but it's it's like a uh, smaller version of a crossbow um, that I just can't blame on it. But there's an Eye of Reach skin that looks like it is intending to be a, a a small crossbow that you can use and i absolutely really love that i think it's it kind of leans heavy into that changing up the aesthetic of what we have without changing the functionality of it uh but i haven't gotten a chance to see this in game to actually see like how big it is when it's just kind of sitting on your screen that's one thing that i have problems with with like games like destiny or halo where you have this really really big weapon and it literally cuts out like it blocks a third of your vision because it 
it is just so big. Uh, and, and I worry about things like this, if it's going to obstruct too much of my vision to have ready. Uh, and with the ready animation that they have with guns, it's it's hard to justify not having it out if I know I'm going to be in contact or combat. Anyone have any thoughts on these? Do you think we're getting some big spider bosses in the future where we're going to have to use lanterns to uh, burn any webs as we dive deep into cave systems to try and hunt down big spiders? My hope not, because if you want, if you, I don't, I already have to deal with spiders here in Australia, so I don't want to deal with like ginormous, like shelob sized spiders in the Sea of Thieves. Thank you very much. Yeah, I could see some folks having trouble with spiders uh, in Sea of Thieves. Mina, did you have any feelings about uh, hunting down spiders or the Wicked Web set for Halloween? The big spiders. Um, I very much like the ship set. The colors are very nice, but then I purples and blues. Yeah, so we are getting a ship set that's based around, uh, well, we've, I think we're getting, see, this is where I need to, to jump into the season a little bit more because uh, I know we are we, we can get the Plunder Pass that has the Siren uh, sails, which is, uh, I actually really love those, but uh, I think I think the commendations for this build rat adventure uh actually gives us the coral set has anyone picked up the coral set from what they've been doing no i haven't played around with it that much i i'm not a huge fan of it i don't think that the coral set is really that that great i think it's kind of tacky looking but i understand the design of it yeah i'm right there with you i uh, i don't even know if i've gotten any of that coral set and i don't care to ever know because I will never equip any piece of it because it's hideous. My own personal opinion. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, speaking of the the uh, Wicked Web uh, uh, content that we're getting as far as the Plunder Pass, uh, we are getting a Fury of the of the Damned event that's starting on, I believe it is October 7th, and that should be going till November 7th. Uh, so it starts in 11 days, or no, it goes till November 4th. I'm sorry, I'm reading that now. Uh, so that is going to be a favors based event. So if you're familiar with the build rat adventures, uh, you do different tasks, the different tasks award uh, different favors and the favors will eventually unlock the different commendation or different uh, cosmetics and the uh, set that we are getting for these uh, challenges is actually a wicked web set. Uh, these are just spiders. They're just straight up spiders. We're getting spider content. So there's a spider tankard uh, that unlocks. You've also got a blunderbuss, uh, cannons. Uh, we've also got, what is it? A figure, two variants of a figurehead. And it looks like uh, these are going to be global events. So it says defeating skeletons. When the event ends, pirates who complete this goal will earn re these rewards if global goals are reached. And uh, there are 10 different ones, it looks like. Um, let's see, this is, what is that? 50 million favors, it looks like. Or no, 50 million skeletons? Yeah, it looks like it's 50 million skeletons that the community as a whole have to kill during this time to be able so to can unlock. I just say, I, I kind of love that idea of like there being a community-wide something yeah, versus ahead. just a you know you and your crew. I think that's I think it's kind of a brilliant extra just layer of stuff to put in there. Uh, you could have to rare for that. Now, why, what about that? Actually, what about that versus doing something on your own is uh, something that you're that you're okay with? Do you feel like you're you're going to have to start carrying the weight of other people based on how much you play? Do you think that this is something that people will be able to hit? Like, give me a little more reason as to what what about that is something that you like? Well, it just I don't know. I guess it gives the idea of that you know a common something for all players to kind of you know circle up around uh, and kind of go after like a common goal. Um, you know, more so than just whatever you would normally do. You know, like yeah, you know, I'll I'll be definitely be more intentional of making sure I go and I kill some extra skellies uh, when that's going on, just to make sure that I'm I'm doing my fair share <laughs> to help carry the load. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I I, I personally I love these events. Uh, it's something that I I grew up with with World of Warcraft. It's it's great when you have these moments where everyone is working towards the same common goal. Uh, there's two challenges with these wicked web figureheads, by the way. Uh, one of them is uh, 50 million skeletons murdered over the course of a month. Uh, the other one is 150 million skeletons murdered during the time of Fury of the Damned event, which again goes from October 7th to November 4th. So it's going to be interesting to see how quickly we hit this. Uh, anyone have any guesses uh, during this month? How many weeks do you think it'll take for us to hit this? Uh, Hefe, you have any idea? 
Goodness, I don't know. I have I, I am terrible when it comes to trying to guess like how how many things go on in this game on a regular basis. Uh, <laughs> I'd, I'd, if I had to guess, I'd probably say it'd be done by probably about two and a half three weeks. Two and a half three weeks. Mina, do you think we'll get it sooner or later? Oh, I have absolutely no idea. Probably a month is not a bad target. Yeah. Okay, Regis, do you think we'll get it uh, sooner or later? I mean, considering considering how many skeletons we face on the daily, along with ocean crawlers and phantoms, probably a week if everybody pulls their own share of the weight. Pan, do you think uh, think a week is too little, too soon, or do you think a week sounds about right? I think a week probably over uh, overestimating our. Uh, or a killing ability to skeletons. Um, I think it will probably be more towards the end of the month that we hit the 150, 150 million. Um, if we get that far, um, but the I, th I think the 50 million is doable within a couple of weeks. You know, I'm sure Rare has. When I know, we, we know they do because because we have all of our individual stats at the end of each year. They they know how many things are killed on a regular basis. So I'm sure they have spaced these out to to fit accordingly to the course of the event. The only concern with this would be that. Obviously, with the new content, most of your enemies are sirens and ocean crawlers. So you're going to have to make a concerted effort to go and kill skellies. Yeah, I, I like the idea that they're... Uh, so this, this update came out on the 23rd. Uh, this event doesn't start for two weeks. So they're giving us at least a solid two weeks of the new content with all of these shrines and treasuries to try and knock this stuff out before we kick up into the fury of the damned event so uh to give a little bit of a description for those listening the fury of the damned event uh goes like this how does it work uh rare's website states actions that upset the undead such as deer uh, clearing a skeleton fort or destroying a ghostly armada will earn the bilge rats favor while the event is underway with extra favors granted for doing so in an alliance watch out for a mysterious note each week detailing when which activities are currently offering extra favors when accomplished as you accrue favor and reach certain thresholds wicked web cosmetic items will be awarded to you for your efforts additionally pirates who complete a short qualifying challenge can take part in community spirit challenges to annihilate a huge number of skeletons and will receive even more rewards after the events end in the pirates of the sea of thieves successfully come together to meet the global goals so you have to do 10 different things uh to be able to earn your right to participate in the wicked web uh challenges for the community spirit stuff so that's what was talking about as far as uh, defeating skeletons when the event ends pirates who challenge uh complete these challenges uh or this goal will earn the rewards if the global goals are reached um so we'll find out a little bit more about what's going on with that i imagine it probably will take place as far as like having to kill uh, different types of skeletons and different ways as most of these events actually kind of revolve around the fate of the flames and gray morrow as with the past uh, events for halloween so um mina you you had some feelings on this you're kind of curious as to what short qualifying challenges means what would be a good challenge for you as far as like uh these do you think something like just going out and uh, killing Grey Morrow a certain number of times, or or do you think people need to go do the Fate of Flame beacons again? What what would you want to to be for these ten qualifying challenges? I don't know, but I'm curious to see what it is that they're gonna have us do as these short qualifying challenge yeah interesting stipulation do you think that this is something that as uh because we had something like this um back in season two and it didn't really matter when you hit the qualifier uh once you did hit the qualifier it basically pulled you into uh the event and you earn the rewards for those regardless um so i'm i'm hoping that this isn't something that uh excludes your skeleton kills from participating in the event even if you haven't hit the the challenges for it if that makes sense well was there anything else that you guys wanted to jump into with this i know we kind of hit the uh the broad scope of things um there's a lot more to dive into later on so i i anticipate that i'll be doing that with uh some other folks in the coming weeks weeks uh but before we dive out of this episode was there anything you guys wanted to touch on i am looking forward to seeing all of the lore that comes out of this update just through all the journals and stuff um i, I like that kind of stuff so I'm, I'm curious to kind of see how all that kind of helps build into the overall narrative of of everything 
Yeah, same here. There's been quite a lot of content that's come with this update, and uh, the lore that is is behind it is exceptional. Uh, I've had a huge blast diving into all the different books, learning a lot about what's been going on with stuff that came into A Pirate's Life. I'll probably be giving uh, those a bit of a dive in future episodes uh, when folks have had a little more opportunity to actually uh, participate in the content to make sure that they aren't uh, missing out on some of that story that, that a lot of us enjoy. Um, still not dealing with Flameheart though. Very interesting. I wonder when we're going to be tackling into that. All right. Well, Hefe, uh, anything you guys want people to check out before we head out? Uh, nope. Nothing. Nothing in particular. Okay. Uh, Mina, anything you got going on? Uh, no, not really. Okay. Regis, are you working on anything right now? Um, I just recently, re I just recently returned to my first CFE's crossover fanfic, and also doing a uh, kind of like a uh, CFE's keyhole podcast, Gold Holders self-insert fanfic where it's just you know, just you logan us gold holders at least the ones that i met with met and met in this on this podcast as as like you know inserting inserting themselves into the world of cfes and trying to like survive it because what i recently discovered is that cfes is dangerous places to live in and real to, to live in if it's you know in real life so which reminds me like i need to, i need to do another chapter of that sooner or later cool i'm glad to hear the writing's going well uh pat is there anything going on with you uh unfortunately sea of thieves has taken a back seat to my work at the moment so oh, i'm gonna say as much as i'd like i'm sorry about that i know that's uh that's hey, definitely look, frustrating it's gonna be great at the end of the month oh yeah <laughs> good awesome <laughs> well you'll be able to pick up uh some cosmetics at that point or just save it for future stuff right see possibly new tv that's the goal everyone gets a new tv um well that's going to do it for this episode uh gold hoarders thank you for joining me thank you for your support it's it's always a fun time to jump in i always learn something new about you guys whenever we dive into this stuff and i always find out what you do and don't like uh but i really appreciate your input on these i'm glad to hear that you guys are enjoying it and i look forward to uh, next month when we get to talk a little bit more about how the season's rounding out if you guys are enjoying the uh the event and, and how things are going with that all right pirates that's going to do it for this episode again thank you for bearing with me while i get better uh sorry for this episode if it didn't come across uh as as coherent uh i've had a really foggy brain the the last week and i'm just hoping that it doesn't have to bleed into next week so uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to let me know. Uh, head over to the show notes for the links to my socials, uh, C-A-P-T-L-O-G-U-N at gmail.com. If you want to write into the show uh, with your story or your feelings on this uh, season so far, uh, hit me up on Twitter at C-A-P-T underscore L-O-G-U-N. And feel free to check out the Discord and uh, Patreon information in the show notes. And that's going to do it for this episode's Pirate. So thank you. I love you. And I look forward to sailing with you on the Sea of Thieves. at Robots Radio get a lot of questions from people who are interested in starting their own podcasts about how they can start, how they can grow their audiences, how they can create good content, even what microphone to use and what software to use, things like that. Well, we're changing things up at Robots Roundtable to talk and share about the things that we've learned, the things that work and the things that don't. We're sharing with you our actual real-world experience. How can you launch a show like the Fallout Lorecast and get as many listeners as we did early on and rock it to the top of the charts on Apple Podcasts? How do you create a show in such a crowded marketplace as it is today, as opposed to 10 years ago? We're getting together every week to share our answers with you. Just look up The Podcast Professor, a Robots Roundtable with the hosts from Robots Radio. Following is a public service announcement from the Starter Set Dungeons & Dragons podcast. This is your D&D campaign. 
This is the Starter Set Podcast. You know how, like, poison frogs don't lick each other's backs? So it's Howl's Moving Castle Mm -hmm. with a face. Mm -hmm. Hey there, I'm Great Mandibles. (laughs) Because one of the party speaks abyssal. You're all going to die. <laughs> and then adventure falls into your lap. Plop. This is your D&D campaign after listening to the Starter Set podcast. <laughs> so join Sam and Ed every Friday on the Starter Set podcast for prime Dungeons & Dragons content. Any questions?